Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Hey, today I want to talk about earthquake and disaster preparedness. The reason why I want to talk about this is because our city, Oakland, Alameda County, and all the surrounding cities, none of them, none of the cities have anything in place in the event of a major catastrophe, meaning another earthquake, big earthquake, which is expected right here in the Bay Area. Another big fire, like the Oakland Hills fire we had in uh, back in 1991. And so there's, there's disasters that we need to prepare for. And we talk about earthquake preparedness, keeping a small amount of supplies to keep you going for at least three days. Uh, let me tell you, you're going to need a lot more than that in uh, three days you're going to need more like at least a minimum of one week to a month because services if uh, it's a major earthquake or a major disaster the city has no resources to help you let me repeat that the city has no resources to help you and so relying on police assistance fire or paramedic uh, assistance is not going to happen in the event of a major earthquake like we saw in 1989 with Loma Prieta. And that was a small earthquake uh, by what they're estimating. And uh, an earthquake here in California can uh, exceed 8.0 and expected as high as a 9.0. And most of the new construction is uh, based upon 8.0 to 8.5 uh, earthquake, which is a very, very severe earthquake. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, I had a, my family, my wife and I, we had an earthquake preparedness uh, plan for our family. And in the event that we could not get together, we had safe houses already in place. And I mean safe house, uh, our, our main safe house uh, was at the Berkeley Marina, our 30 foot uh, express cruiser. Uh, and uh, the reason why it was at Berkeley uh, is because uh, my wife at the time worked in the city of Emeryville for Chiron. And um, she didn't like Emeryville, the marinas in Emeryville. So, uh, she did like the dock, uh, the new docks that we, we were assigned uh, when we placed our, our boat there. And so uh, we had our 30-footer. It's a, a twin-engine uh, uh, express cruiser, so it's uh, ocean-going, and it was docked right there uh, close by. And, and uh, she should be able to uh, drive there uh, even in, in a worst-case scenario, her her Lincoln Navigator that I bought her was four-wheel drive, so uh, or actually all-wheel drive. And then the Honda Element that she bought after that, uh, that was uh, all-wheel drive. So she should have been able to uh, get to a safe house and emergency location where she had all her supplies, emergency uh, uh, supplies, food, uh, communication equipment uh, uh, and also protection where uh, in a safe on the on board the vessel we kept two guns and, and so she had access to that in the event that she needed uh, to protect herself at the marina and if things were getting really wild out of hand and a crime was happening everywhere the purpose of the boat was to leave to leave shore we would have supplies on board the boat and we would also be uh, fishing from the boat and to su supplement our food that was on board uh, that boat also had uh, a fresh water maker on board hot and cold water uh, uh, pumping system uh, and I mean it was a complete uh, apartment and, and that was the primary and so for myself uh, I kept the 26-foot express cruiser on a trailer at the Alameda uh, Marina. You know, I had a personal friend who was the harbor master, 
who oversaw everything and she uh, got me uh, a parking space for my trailer and boat on shore. The reason why I I liked Alameda, number one, it was safe. Alameda Marina also had 24-hour uh, uh, security and cameras all over uh, the uh, um, the marina, the parking lot. I mean, everything was covered, and you were only a couple of minutes from the Alameda Police Station should some some uh, crime arise uh, in the yard. Uh, and then the only, and the other reason why, because literally I could just go to the yard uh, with my truck, hook the uh, trailer onto my truck, drive it one and a half blocks to the Grand Street launch ramp and launch my boat and be on the water in just a matter of minutes. Uh, and again, uh, uh, my wife, she was uh, very knowledgeable in seamanship. She knew how to drive the boat, the twin engines, and the single engine. Uh, she she wasn't proficient at uh, running in the ocean, but for the bay, for the delta, for everything else, she was perfectly fine, and she could handle that boat on her own, uh, meaning that she can untie, untie, uh, launch, retrieve, everything. She could do everything with that boat, just like the 26-footer that I was uh uh, that was designed for my needs in, in the event of emergency, and I could reach her directly. But I could put the boat into the water close by and uh, drive that boat to wherever uh, we uh, were talking about on the radio because we had a special radio channel. Uh, we had, uh, um, what, are, what are those, um, the uh, GMRS uh, radios. And so we had a, a specific frequency that we would use and it was also encoded uh, so scrambled uh, signal so that people couldn't hear us talking in the event that we we had were using the GM, gmrs radios and the nice thing about the gmrs radio it it's a cheap uh, general uh, uh, public uh, radio and, and you can buy an fcc license and you can uh, access uh, some pretty premium channels which will get you up to 30 miles of coverage using a repeater system and, and so we had that on on board all of our, our uh, three boats the third boat uh, which was our little sport boat we kept at my parents uh, driveway because my parents didn't mind they loved having that because it brought conversation to to them so uh, the sport boat didn't cost us hardly anything to keep because we just kept it at my parents' uh, driveway, and uh, they enjoyed that and having that in there. But it was also uh, an, another emergency boat. If uh, we needed something just really small, like going uh, accessing a lake, uh, that would be a boat that would be very fuel efficient and very light and easy to to maneuver and move around so we had all of our bases covered we could uh, literally live out on the bay for a year without any problems we could uh, supplement our food uh, with uh, fish and, and uh, shellfish from the bay and from the ocean crab from the ocean also I'm a hunter so uh, waterfowl is uh, would be on the menu, uh, and and so there's a lot of options out there. And, and but we were prepared. Uh, we always had uh, the ability to create our, our own fresh water because of our boat. Two of our boats had fresh water makers, and so we could easily make up to, if I remember right, 1,400 gallons a day of fresh water simply using the bay uh, through our uh, uh, desalinizing uh, filter on board the boat uh, boats <laughs> and they weren't cheap you know on the on the bigger 30 footer that was a twelve thousand dollar watering uh, system water conversion system on the smaller 26 footer uh, that one if I remember right that one was like eighty five hundred dollars so it it was they're not cheap and then the maintenance is very high on them uh, there's uh, uh, um, hydrocarbon filters that have to be replaced and checked regularly 
Uh, also, uh, then you have the regular other filters that have to be in line. And, and so there's a lot of filtering going on before it even hits the desalinizing uh, uh, machine. So, but we were prepared. We had guns and ammunition on, in uh, high security safes on board our boats. Uh, we had fresh water maker. We had plenty of communications so that we could communicate. Uh, even if all cell phone uh, situations were down, I still had satellite phones on each of the of the vessels. You know, a satellite phone on the 30 footer and a satellite phone on my 26 footer. And then on top of that, we had EPRIBs so that I could actually track where my boat was uh, in the event that the EPRIB uh, was uh, uh, activated and it would be activated through uh, hitting uh, the water because it, it's an emergency beacon that sends out a, a message signal, the exact same message signal that the new iPhones use, the satellite uh, communication, because it's, a, uh, it's transmitted on a specific frequency and it uh, transmits the uh, longitude and latitude of where you are on Earth and, and it sends out uh, that message and continues to send out that message which goes to the NOAA uh, um, orbiting satellites and then uh, the, orb, uh, the NOAA satellite notifies NOAA who then notifies the Coast Guard or whatever uh, law agency should it be on land or should it be on uh, in the ocean so it's the same same situation or same system just that it's used for emergency, and that whereas um, that signal uh, is, like I said, on an EPRIB, that's uh, an emergency beacon that's used in the uh, shipping and boating industries when you're in international waters, and, and it's your lifeline. Literally, it's your lifeline to uh, help. Um, but we had planned everything out. Uh, we didn't plan on uh, staying on land because... Uh, the probability of lawlessness is very great. And then with so many people having guns and then also so many people not having guns uh, is a problem. And, and so uh, we created our own little uh, situation and world where we would be protected and safe. In the middle of the bay, you would see and hear anybody and everything coming. There's no way to sneak up on you quietly period, day or night. Uh, also, the bay is a re food resource. Um, it is also a resource to create the fresh drinking water on board the boats. We had fuel, plenty of fuel on boards to the last for a uh, number of weeks, so that wasn't a, a problem. Uh, the 30-footer the had 250 gallons of fuel, and the 26-footer the had 100 gallons of fuel. So uh, we could get around uh, quite nicely for quite some time and be comfortable. Uh, and, and we had televisions uh, that uh, uh, were tuned into the uh, local TV uh, broad air over the air broadcasts. Uh, it, <laughs> the streaming services hadn't uh, come into its uh, prime yet. It was still just starting up. In fact, <laughs> Netflix was uh, just starting up at that time uh, when. Uh, we were getting when I got out of boating essentially but folks you need to have a prepared uh, uh, an emergency preparation we had planned ours it cost us a lot of money uh, but one of the things about our plan it was our contingency plan covered a lot of things and we could also take some people along with us so in the event that uh, my wife's uh, son uh, was in the area and he needed to be a safe place. He could join us. We could raft up uh, two of the boats, our, our two express cruisers out in the middle of the bay, be perfectly safe. And we were armed in the event that we had to protect ourselves. So, uh, folks, you need to get, get a plan in place, whether uh, it's a, a shelter, uh, sheltering in place, uh, underground shelter, RV, something you need to have uh, an emergency plan in place because times are getting really crazy here uh, and, and I can see, only see them getting worse and in the event of a major catastrophe like uh, 
uh, a major earthquake here in the Bay Area, which is anticipated, it could be very disastrous for you and your family. And so this is an opportunity to plan right now, put things in place, and let everybody uh, know what to do in the event of this emergency and let them know where your safe houses are. And so we had, we, my wife and I, we each had a safe house, but we also had a plan so that we would uh, meet back up uh, once our situation uh, became stabilized. So thank you for joining me today. Hope that helps you in your Bay Area plans for emergencies because the city and county is not coming to your aid when you need them most. Thanks for joining me once again. We'll be right back.